This week on Postcards, tips on pizza making from the world's best, the brush men and women of the bush in the thriving art scene that is Broken Hill, Chad Corns gets right into the marine biology of York Peninsula. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to taking you down into lovely Inman Valley. It has some real claims to fame. First, though, Lisa is off the trat. It's a legend in late night eating. The diners at La Trattoria have been sampling Andy Parisi's culinary wares for decades. He's the classic Italian host, a gregarious fella who'll often mix it with the patrons, and if time allows, his daughter Simone and little grandson Hugo. And when 10-month-old Hugo has a few more teeth, no doubt he'll be munching away on the pizzas for which Andy is rightly famous. La Trat, as it's known, is an icon of the Adelaide restaurant scene, having opened here in King William Street 30 years ago in November. And throughout those 30 years, Andy Parisi has been making pizza. So that's... ...which certainly paid off last year. November 2004, Andy flew to New York for a competition in Times Square, where the local pizza makers like to get down and boogie. It was all part of Dairy Farmers Caboolture Best of the Best Pizza Challenge, at which Andy was crowned the best pizza maker in the world, much to the joy of his excited daughters behind the home movie camera. Dad, talk English. With the speeches out of the way, it was back to La Trattoria, where word has certainly spread about his marinara pizza, the one that explains the American Plate Award in La Trattoria's bar. The secret of the pizza is perhaps everybody knows is the dough, the first bite, which it's an old generation that my dad taught me how to do it. Andy arrived in Australia with his father Anthony in 1963 from Messina in Sicily. The Parisis came here as pasta makers, but soon made the transition to pizza, with Anthony establishing the famous Marcellinus Pizza Bar in 1967. In 1975, Andy with his brother ventured out on their own to establish La Trat. And as you can see, some of his late father's tricks have stuck. With the pizza dough now nice and airy, Andy then bastes with oil. And then I use a fresh tomato base with basil and salt and pepper, of course, and a bit of a garlic, which are normally spread right through the pizza. Add just a touch of cheese, some shrimps and calamari. And scallops, which, you know, give us a bit of a taste. And then I'm using some fresh prawns, which I set them up in the middle. Just before it's off into the oven, Andy adds a sprinkling of oregano. Six minutes in here and pronto. It's almost ready apart from one final touch. That's the pizza which won me an award in New York. And believe me, it's worth an award. So much so that Andy's daughter Chantal, seen here with famous patron Mick Jagger in the 80s, entered her dad in the World Pizza Challenge. She's grown up a bit since then and is often seen working alongside her father at the family's other business, Parisi's on McGill Road. Here the whole family chips in and the kids have always been a part of Andy's life, with other daughter Simone doing her homework on restaurant tables at La Trat while Dad worked away in the kitchen. Running a restaurant until the wee small hours, taking kids to school and swimming lessons, it's been a hard slog for Andy, but one which has earned him the infinite respect of his children. I mean, he used to take so much pride in, oh, I've got a tear in my eye, <laughs> of, you know, what we used to do and stuff, that he would never miss out on a moment, even though, um, you know, he would work those hours. But more than three decades in the kitchen is a long time. So what's the secret? I love the people, I love the crowd, I love mixing with people. My passion is pizza because I, I always like to invent things different. And that means new toppings for new patrons, both famous and not so famous. In an Adelaide icon which still brings so many people together. La Trattoria is at 346 King William Street in the city, while Parisi's Cafe is at the top of McGill Road.
Cool, this time of that, that really makes you hungry, doesn't it? Next up, Broken Hill, the Silver City. Nowadays, it's a springboard to the outback as well, and maybe that's why it's attracted so many brush men and women. We'll see them next. Ooh, there's a bubble. See, I've just had a lesson on how to catch yabbies here at the Galloway Yabby Farm in the Inman Valley. First, get your chicken neck, and then get your yabby. But be prepared to wait. Now, while I do, a chance to bring up an interesting fact about South Australia. Which is the only family-owned brewery that is still going in Australia, not just the state? Give you a clue, it's fourth generation. Well, while you're thinking about that, and I'm waiting for the Yabby, we're headed up the Barrier Highway, all the way to Broken Hill, and it's very lively art scene. At times, the sheer vastness of the Australian outback can be intimidating. But each year, more and more of us head out bush, wanting to experience that other Australia, away from the city lights and traffic, where the heat haze confounds our sense of distance, and where the open road stretches for mile upon mile. It's a wide open road. It's a wide open road. The mass exodus to the bush is confirmation that our own view of this vast continent has changed. And maybe that's because over the past 30 years or so, we've seen a lot more of it, on film and on canvas. And nowhere is that more apparent than in a place like Broken Hill, a town with more than 100 artists and 30 galleries. I think we have more artists per head of population in this town than anywhere in the world. It's quite amazing. Roxanne Minchin has built on the traditions of Pro Heart, Jack Absalom and, of course, her late husband, artist and accountant Eric Minchin, the founding father of a group who would become world famous as the Brushman of the Bush. It kicked off in 1973 with Eric Minchin, who was asked to do an exhibition. Uh, he found that he didn't have enough time to get it together, so he asked a few of his friends. And lo and behold, the Woman's Weekly turned up and did a full colour double spread and called it the Brushman of the Bush. And Eric thought, wow, what a name. So he contacted them and said, sure, you can use the name. And Eric thought, we've got something. And then it sort of showed people that you could be an accountant, you could be a miner and paint. You didn't have to perhaps have the funny little hat and live in a garret. And it got people more interested in the beauty of Australian art. Roxanne represents the new wave with her vibrant paintings of Broken Hill and its surrounds, like the Menindee Lakes and the Red Desert Dust. And those colours bring an almost surreal quality to Roxanne's work. The surreal also features heavily in the work of Pro Hart. His gallery is in the back streets of Broken Hill and houses one of the finest private collections in the world. Here you'll find the works of Arthur Boyd, Sidney Nolan and many more. And of course the works of the former Broken Hill miner himself. Some you may remember from television commercials, while others portray the characters of this frontier town. Out here, art surrounds you, and if you don't believe me, head to the big picture in the Silver City Mint and Art Centre. It's the home of the world's largest acrylic painting on canvas, all 100 metres of it, from approaching dust storms to the depictions of the hill's most recent artistic phenomenon, the Sculpture Symposium on the outskirts of town. Out here it takes a visionary to capture the scale of this country. But the visionaries who first tried to paint this weren't your typical brushmen. They were bushmen. Take Jack Absalom. This painting depicts his days as a former roo shooter. He knows the outback like the back of his hand, having grown up on the Nullarbor Plain. His gallery is full of South Australian images, like Mount Padawerta in the Flinders and the breakaways further north. They're all big vistas and worthy of a big canvas. I hate walking around painting paintings like this because look, we look at the scene like that. This is the sort of scene I look at. I love this area and I think this does depict uh, 
the vastness and the distance and everything else and the beauty of it all people a lot of people look at that and think oh there's not much beauty there there's no nice green or that but i love this type of country and it shows his gallery is just one of the many listed with the broken hill visitor information center the centre also sells copies of Art of Broken Hill, a book featuring many of the town's artists and galleries. Broken Hill, it sure is a city of surprises, isn't it? Now, the answer to our question, what is the only family brewery left in Australia? Cooper's, of course, and its famous ale. Meanwhile, how, what do you reckon I've done? Have a look at these. You reckon I caught all this and you'll believe anything. But after the break, we will be back in the Inman Valley, careful, and finding out some of its claims to fame. <laughs> It's your classic, picturesque Sunday drive in the countryside. Rolling hills of fertile farming country punctuated with magnificent old red and blue gums. This is the pretty Inman Valley on the Fleuria Peninsula. It's the quiet back way south, about 80 kilometres from Adelaide between Yankalilla on the Gulf side and Victor Harbour on the other. But amidst the docile cows and cattle and horses, the Inman hides its claims to fame, like this one a paddock of ponds holding more than a million yabbies. So is there, is there a bit of an art to catching yabbies commercially? Oh, there is, Keith. Yeah, there's, um, there's various methods of doing it. Jim Schofield is chief yabby wrangler at Galloway Yabbies. He and his wife Carol traded the daily demands of dairy farming to raise hordes of little nippers. They still round them up twice a day, though, at least the ones in the traps. An opera house trap. An opera house trap. <laughs> OK, <laughs> we're about to find out what that means. Oh, I think we do already. Look at that. And real yab... Ah, cop the yabbies. And Jim's offsider, Scruff the Fearless, well, he's adapted his cow yard skills with ease. So that's what the restaurant trade's looking for. The ideal size is 80 to 90 grams. The tail is packed full of tasty meat. The rest goes into the bisque, or seafood soup. Galloway also farms the WA Marin. It's a freshwater version of the crayfish. Similar in price too, which is why Scruff's on guard duty. Did you get a Scruff? <laughs> it's gone. The catch is mostly restaurant bound, but Jim makes sure that he keeps enough back for a feed on the deck of the intimate Chateau Galvo Cafe overlooking the ponds. This is all a long way from the first settlers who arrived here in the 1840s. Exploring the traditional lands of the Ramondieri people, they first lobbed in the aptly named Bald Hills at the top end of the valley. On a side road up there sits the Cornhill Wesleyan Chapel. It was built in 1859 and it's still standing, but only just. The Inman Valley Township down the hill wasn't far behind. It's a sleepy little place with a handful of houses, a garage and a general store that's worth a stop for a tasty homemade pie. When the Methodist Church up the rise was opened in 1871, the district was lashed by a mighty thunderstorm, and some of the parishioners thought it was a sure sign they shouldn't have chosen a lady preacher. You'd hope for better weather on the Hyson Trail. It eases along the Inland River a while here, between treks up and over the ranges, but the spectacular views make it well worth the climb. The valley below was named after Henry Inman, South Australia's first superintendent of police. He was no doubt pleased with the look of all this, but nobody back then knew about the enormous geological significance of the place. The telltale sharp drop into the flat-bottomed U-shaped valley below gives it away. This landscape was created by a giant glacier of sheet ice. And this one slab of half-billion-year-old riverbed rock provided the vital clue and another claim to fame. In 1859, geologist Professor Selwyn recognised the smoothing and scratching as the grinding of a glacier. We now estimate that was about 250 million years ago when Australia was part of the supercontinent Gondwanaland. 
and it was a lot closer to the South Pole. Now, thanks to the River Inman removing all of this topsoil right down to the bedrock here, we can see what one glacier has done. There are these long grooves headed this way as the glacier went that way. Looks like someone's been along here with a giant butter curler. It's the glacier. Here's the last of the grooves being used by the River Inman late summer. Here's another one, just grinding away and creating this smoothing and these ripples as it goes to the west. Now these fine lines are going in the same direction. You see the natural grain of the rock is this way, but this is caused by a bit of rock at the bottom of the glacier being dragged along. It etches out this line, hits a bit, clunk, out comes a bit, here's another bit. This is called chatter, these bits that are split off, but these fine parallel cuts, that's striation. The unofficial keeper of the rock is Dave Hill, the chef extraordinaire who runs the Glacier Rock restaurant above. I've been here a few years and I've had geologists from all over the world and they drool. Yeah. They're down there for hours taking photographs. Yeah. Wander around one of the world's largest exposed glacial pavements and you'll also marvel at a huge granite boulder lodged in the riverbank. So where'd they come from? Granite Island. But that boulder? Came from Granite Island. Maybe 30 tonnes of granite, called an erratic because it was carried all the way from Victor Harbour, about 20 kilometres away. Powerful forces that also cut the valley that is now Backstairs Passage. Refreshments and Glacier Rock have gone together for more than a century now. Today it's a quirky English pub atmosphere with the Australian bush outside and locals to join you for lunch. So this was the eternally slow way of the glacier. Now, it's certainly worth a quick day trip, or even better, a slow stroll along the Hyson Trail through the Inman Valley. Glacier Rock is on the Inman Valley Road between Yankalella and Victor, near the golf course. Access is free. And check on our website for opening times of the restaurant and Galloway Yabbies. If you spend a bit more time in the Inman Valley, you can fit in a round of golf along the Inman. Very pretty course. If you want to spend even more time, be in our competition. Thanks to SA Tourism, you can stay at Ratley's at Pear Tree Hollow. It's right at the top of the valley, so spectacular views, a perfect retreat, eight acres of garden. If you want to be in it, phone 1900 966 399, leave your name, address and telephone number. Lines are open as usual till midnight tomorrow. We'll let the winner know by mail and the name will be posted at SA Tourism. Now, Chad Corns very happily going back to school. It's over the golf, and it ain't the way school was when I was there. Head to school at Port Vincent Primary on the Yorks, and you're just as likely to need board shorts and flippers as any exercise book. From the schoolyard to the aquatic centre, it's pretty obvious that the nearby Golf St Vincent has had a big impact on these kids. Tourists who venture into the school, and you're all definitely welcome, can expect an eight-year-old tour guide like Dylan O'Connor to show you around the school aquarium. But some of these down here, this little guy. That's a sponge crab. Yeah. That's a zebrafish, cowfish, moonlighter, puffer, more yeah. sponge crabs, and that crab down at the end is a decorated crab. As you can see, these Port Vincent kids know their stuff. And the reason? Well, it's simple. They've got access to all of this. Believe it or not, this is a classroom, Port Vincent Bay. It's the ideal spot for South Australian kids to learn a range of aquatic skills. Hey, mate. Yeah. <laughs> this beautiful bay is just as much a part of their school as the library or general purpose hall. And out here, students from around South Australia are being challenged all the time. And you can see that even though this boat's capsized, these kids aren't scared. OK? Because that's the one thing that we really pride ourselves in is, is the water safety and how, how to teach these skills. Soon these kids are away again. They're from Jamestown in the mid-north, a good 70 kilometres from the ocean. But by the look of it, they all have their sea legs. And that's a credit to the instructors at the Port Vincent Primary School Aquatic Centre, which is open to all kids across the state. Well, these kids uh, don't see much water from up in Jamestown. No, they wouldn't. Looks like a lot of fun. Yep. How many it. kids a year? Uh, yeah, we put through, I reckon, between four and 5,000. And that number doesn't vary much. Because we run camps, 
The kids are here for three days. That leaves plenty of time for sailboarding, sailing, kayaking and of course snorkeling. Looks like an amazing schoolroom experience. Too good not to join in. So here I go. <laughs> Let's do it. How is it? Good? Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go. The school has won many environment and education awards, and all the kids who come here get to know a lot more about this state's marine life. The local kids often head off with waterproof cameras, and I'll let their underwater experiences speak for themselves. The kids also carry out underwater reef surveys, providing marine biologists with a better understanding of just what's in our gulf. And believe me, there's a lot to see. Crabs everywhere we look today. Amazing. The two differences between a male and a female crab, underneath you'll notice there's a flap on them. And this flap here, I'll just take that up on my chat. This flap here underneath, see how pointy that is in a triangle shape? With the females, they tend to be a lot more rounded and they've got a lot of brown stripes on them also. The other feature is they're also very brown in colour, more so than the blue swimmer. The males only have one claw. Today they do, <laughs> Chad. <laughs> I protected you. As you can see, it's a great program. Better than schoolwork? Yeah! <laughs> To enrol, contact 8853 7027. And if you're too old for school, don't despair. The Port Vincent kids run regular tours of the centre. As you can see, Chad really enjoyed catching up with kids from all over the peninsula. Well, that's it for this week. See you next Sunday.